The mere despair of surgery he cures, hanging a golden stamp about their necks. That is how Edward the Confessor is described in Shakespeare's Macbeth, and when he died without issue, this paved the way for foreign conquerors to invade England. William, Duke of Normandy, took the throne in 1066 and changed the culture of the country irrevocably. The 10th and 11th centuries saw the emergence of Europe's mightiest centralised monarchies, the predecessors of Europe's modern political and economic powerhouses, Capetian France and Norman England. When Edward the Confessor of England died childless, foreign invaders took the opportunity to stake their claims to the throne. Harald Hardrada of Norway attacked from the north and defeated the former kingdoms of Northumbria and Mercia, but his army was routed at Stamford Bridge and thus ended the Viking Age. William, Duke of Normandy, in modern-day France, was much more successful and won victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, where Edward's brother-in-law, the then English king Harold Godwinson, was killed by an arrow through the eye. Meanwhile, in the eastern portion of Charlemagne's former empire, Carl the Great's legacy was being thrown off in favour of a new dynamic and powerful dynasty, the Capetians. During the High Middle Ages, these monarchs centralised the kingdom around the city of Paris and consolidated their rule in the south of France. Meanwhile, the North African Muslim Berbers had conquered Spain and held their capital at Cordoba, which, although not exceeding ancient Rome, was the most populous city in the world at the time. Edward the Confessor, as his name suggests, was known for his piety, and he left no direct heirs, which conferred weak legitimacy on his successor. England, as a single unified polity, was a fairly new concept, and could be traced only two monarchs back to Knut the Great, the Danish king, who had held it alongside Norway in what is referred to as the North Sea Empire. It is no surprise that a Norwegian, Harald Hardrada, the last Viking king, tried to wrest the kingdom from the clutches of Edward's brother-in-law, Harald Godwinson, after his death. William, Duke of Normandy, was also of Viking descent, because the term Norman is a corruption of Northman, referring to the Norse, who settled the northern coast of France and integrated with the local population. Harald Sigurdsson's attempt at gaining the English throne failed, but William succeeded at the Battle of Hastings. Thereafter, he replaced the native aristocracy with his supporters and made Norman French the prestige language of the realm. He intimidated the Anglo-Saxon population by building hundreds of Motten Bailey castles and erecting massive stone cathedrals. The north of England, which harboured Danish loyalties, was met with a scorched earth policy and subsequent man-made famine, which was known as the Harrying of the North. One of the Norman's most important innovations was the Motten Bailey Castle, because unlike the prior fortifications that were designed to shelter local populations from invasion, these constructions defended the newly installed lords against their own peasantry. They consisted of great mounds of earth with wooden stockades built on top and were, in essence, military bases designed to intimidate. Often they utilised bricks from Roman ruins and were constructed through forced labour. The Normans also had great influence on the English language, and, although there was stark divide between the French-speaking elites and the Anglo-Saxon populace, innovations percolated down. This resulted in the curious mix we have today, where the sophisticated words pork and mutton come from Old French, and the rustic pig and sheep are of Old English origin. The greatest achievement of William's kingship was the Doomsday Book of 1086, which was a general census of everyone and everything in England, designed to assist in establishing a comprehensive taxation system. Its detail was unsurpassed in all the world up to this point, and consisted in an inquiry conducted with immense energy and discipline. The logical layout of the text had one primary purpose, which was to answer this question regarding each part of the kingdom. Am I able to increase taxes here? Although William was a powerful king, who left an indelible architectural mark on England with his awe-inspiring cathedrals and castles, and irrevocably changed English culture, he was not able to extend his rule to Scotland. Instead, Scotland learned from the Normans and fortified itself against the English, using their defensive techniques, 
which allowed the Scots to affirm their own unique identity, laws and currency. Wales, by contrast, was conquered slowly over a period of 200 years, and Ireland was colonised. Norman accounts of the Irish describe its inhabitants as naked savages, who were an ignorant and backward people. This, however, was not true at all, as the Irish were Christian and scholars long before any Englishmen. France was born from the western portion of Charlemagne's empire, which had also included modern-day Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. The French kings spent a lot of time fighting the Normans on their northern coast, who had developed a unique culture combining Frankish with Norse identity. In 987, the Carolingian dynasty, which was descended from the first Holy Roman Emperor, came to an end with the death of Louis V and the ascension of the humbly named Hugh Capet, who established Paris as the capital, but held little power out with its borders. Philip II, the first to use the title King of France, is famous for his part in the Third Crusade, but he also extended French power southwards by participating in Pope Innocent III's Albigensian persecution of the Cathars from 1209 to 1229. In the late 13th century, Philip IV was just as ruthless in his bigoted expulsion of France's Jewish population and the destruction of the Knights Templar, who were a powerful group of religious warriors who had gained wealth and status in the Crusades. Muslim-ruled Cordoba in Spain was the capital of the world in the year 1000, with 450,000 inhabitants, but it did not surpass ancient Rome's population of one million. Muslim Berbers from North Africa had conquered the native Visigoth elite of Spain in much the same way William's Normans did the Anglo-Saxon nobility of England. Like the Normans within France, the Berbers did not have authorization from the Caliph to expand into Iberia. Unlike the Normans, however, they had no desire to push north, because at this time Europe at large was viewed as a backwater, devoid of riches. The Muslims were minority rulers, and promoted an atmosphere of religious tolerance between themselves, Jews and Christians. This led to a flourishing in Jewish scholarship, which was able to draw from a multitude of intellectual traditions without fear of direct persecution. Many medievalists see this period as a golden age, where the monotheistic religions coexisted in harmony and conviviality.